Heather McDonald. We are so excited to have you on the podcast, mainly because you are such an expert curator of headlines. And I just want to pat page six on the back for a second, because we are lucky enough to be included in the headlines that you gather from time to time. I just want to know, how would you describe your approach to your news gathering process? Well, you know, I, I follow a lot of different sources and from everything from TikTok to I have a Juicy Scoop Facebook page and those people submit stuff that maybe I wouldn't see or they discover. Um, but I mean, I follow obviously page six, daily news, all that stuff. And then I just follow just like you guys, just like page six says, follows other, uh, you know, people's Instagrams and whatnot to be like, oh my God, you know, Brittany posted this or this person said that and or the, I know or noticing a comment or whatever. And then, yeah, and then just whatever I find interests me, like, and in covering shows, um, I do lose, lose interest in shows sometimes and I don't are, cover them anymore. And are any like, losing oh, your I, interest right now? Are, are there any I that mean, you're like, yeah. What well, are you over? I mean, a couple of years ago, I, when it first started, I was really into 90 Day Fiance. I wow. thought it was hilarious. I thought it was so authentic. And then, unfortunately, with some of these shows, you just realize that it's not authentic anymore because they're in four or five seasons. Or there's like so many hours of it and so many spinoffs <laughs> and so many characters that I'm like, mm, you know, um, still down for all the housewives, but What's kind of nice is like, yeah, if I'm not into it anymore, I'm like, sorry, I'm not going to, it feels like work. You well, know? And I and feel, then, yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah. I was gonna say, I don't know if you felt this last season of Vanderpump, I kind of was like trudging through, but this preview, I don't know about you. I'm locked in. I'm excited. I saw the preview okay. and I'm, I'm, you know, good friends with Lala and friendly with Katie. And we actually hung out on two dinners when we were at BravoCon and so I kind of knew like what was going on and I'm all for all these people staying and continuing and definitely their lives got juicier. Unfortunately, you know, a divorce makes these, the Bravo reality shows more juicy. And of course, Lala had her breakup with her fiance. And then of course the divorce of Katie and Tom and all these other characters. And for like years, I've been like, do we still have to pretend that like they go to the restaurant or, yeah. or even even Lisa I like and I understand it's her show, but he, I kind of hope that in this next season, sometimes I feel like her coming in, you know, like so tell me what well, what happened at the baby shower, and you're like, oh, now we have to just have them tell her because somehow contractually she has to be in it so much <laughs> and i'm just kind of like who cares like just follow these people that are now in their 30s and some in their 40s as a group of friends living in los angeles let's see that let's stop hiding that their personalities that actually get you know brand deals or you know some other opportunity and just follow them as 30 somethings in Hollywood that are going through friendships and relationships. Like, why do we even have to deal with who's got a shift? <laughs> right. What are your you know? thoughts on Raquel, who your friend Lala once described as a Bambi eyed bitch? Now she's stepping up to the plate. She's making oh. out with Garcelle's son. She's making out with Schwartz. She's pissing Katie off. She's getting Katie so activated. What, what are your thoughts around that as, as a friend of Katie's? I mean, you know, the whole, th the whole thing is crazy, you know, and any, any relation, any divorce where someone's like, you know what, it's, it's just so great. We're just, you know, um, we're friends and we have love and respect. It, it never, it so rarely works out that two people are on the completely same page and they're not going to be jealous and they're not going to be hurt. You got divorced for a reason. Best friends don't get divorced. Okay. So everybody that says I'm divorcing my best friend and we're going to remain best friends. Guess what? You're not best friends. You're not. Otherwise you'd stay together. So, yeah. So I think that there was some hurt and I love that Ra that, you know, Raquel gets to stay and gets she's having stay. her fun and yeah, she gets to stay on the show. However, though, have you guys noticed what was up with the Vanderpump photo shoot and why does everyone look so weird and strange Raquel looks like she's 42 years old I'm it's like what, very, what 
it's very odd because it's like I, I think the point was for everyone to look younger, but with like the heavy photoshopping, everyone looks a lot older or it looks like we're continuing on with that like AI instagram it, it looked like AI. yes it looked like ai and even tom shorts who's like the cutest of them all the most handsome like, he like did this like 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 fat dad look and i'm like what who what how pissed are they all and I then know. katie who's never looked more gorgeous in real life yeah did she doesn't Coastline. look great in it so i'm kind of like what is all this? I it mean, is kind I'm of funny. dying to hear from them to see what if they were as disappointed. Yeah, because they are the one cast on Bravo where I feel like everyone is pretty hot. Like oh, no gorgeous. one really needs yeah. the touch-ups. And they are so filtered. It's not even like a face to. It's just, it looks like they have a stunt double. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like, I'm like, why does all of a sudden this person have bags under their eyes? Like it wasn't even like, it's just very <laughs> strange. They need to redo it and put it out pretty again like i don't know what that was all about but um, and i do yeah yeah and i ahead. do love that evan said that you're really good at finding headlines but one of my favorite things that you do is you're pretty good at making them too you get into some you scoop yourself into some drama which i am so happy to watch what has there been any lately or that you really can remember when like you kind of got into a thing with like a housewife or a celebrity where you're like how do i get out of this or like how did this even how did they even like see this to get so mad about it i mean I, I, you know, listen, I don't ever want to be a Bethany Frankel that just goes after people for clouts, you know, be, just to like get in a fight with like, I just noticed she did a TikTok where she was like, Alex Earl, let me organize your, your closet. And I'm like, oh, you're just so like, I was insane. I'm up. like, yeah, I'm like, like why, are you, all... why are you stitching with a 23 year old? Because like... we all, because it gets us talking. It's like, it's just like, oh my God, just relax. Or just like, yeah, look, I am I talking about Harry and Megan? Yeah, but there's certain people that like, you know, go after people so much because it gets the page six headline or whatever. And there are times that I'm just sometimes laying in my bed and I do just make a comment because I'm like, this is so annoying. Why isn't the rest of the world seeing what a hypocritical post this is or whatever? And I'll just say something. And based on how slow the news day is, sometimes <laughs> it does become something, but it's never like my intention because I say so much on my podcast that nobody picks up as a story. People just listen to it and are like, oh, that was good. I'll keep listening. But I don't like, because I don't have someone that like sends out a PR thing and was like, Heather McDonald said this, you know? And I, so I understand how the, the stories get written and I enjoy it too. But like, um, there, yeah, I guess there's just been, yeah, there's times where I'm like, okay, I, I didn't really mean it to get this, right. you know, well, to I mean get this big or whatever, but yeah. Bethany is such a, a polarizing figure, and I don't think that yeah. you are alone in your opinions about her. I, I know that Danny and I live, laugh, love everything you have to say about her, because more often than not, we agree with what you have to say about her. But what would you say is the most annoying thing about Bethany Frankel, Heather? I mean, I really do think she's just a very hypocritical person. And there's a lot of hypocrites. And, you know, when she tried to shut down TikTokers that were merely talking about her and she didn't like what they were saying I didn't like that because being in this business for as long as I have and having the podcast for over seven and a half years it's so important that providing we say allegedly and stuff that we should be able to say we should be able to give opinions and to think that like a powerful person can shut down someone else's voice a lot of people we not only would we our freedom of speech be affected but all this industry that all of us are are having fun with and, and cultivating our own little businesses. I don't want to see that happen. So I didn't like that. And, um, but the fact that she, you know, came up with her rewatching housewives or whatever, I, I'm like, yeah, of course you're going to do it. That's what people, people don't want to hear you interview Ben and Jerry and how they came up with, you know, Cherry Garcia ice cream. That's not why we're into you, Bethany. <laughs> but I also think, and I don't know how the show is doing, but I also think like we have regurgitated Scary Island 20 billion times. So, You're okay, so now we're going to hear you and Elizabeth Moss talk. Oh, like, and I also think that whole thing of like, oh my God, a successful A-lister watches Bravo. Like yeah, that was kind of juicy and kind of fun when Andy started having these bigger stars come on like three or four years ago. Like, oh my God, Sharon Stone knows who I am or whatever. Now I'm kind of like, 
yeah, we all watch it. Like it's all, it's not that amazing to hear an A-lister's, it's not like that funny to hear an A-lister's opinion. Like I just like, I don't think it's that funny that like a macho straight guy is giving his opinion about the women on the show. I'm like the women on, the reason I like to talk about the women on the show is because I am one of those women. I am married. I am a mom. I am their age. I have friends who've gotten divorced. I, you know, I've struggled with siblings. I've, you know, that's why I can relate to all this stuff so much. And I love talking about it. And it is fun to hear people outside of the box give their opinion, but I don't think it's unique anymore. Yeah. And one of my friends who wa- who listened to, they were like, I need to test out some of this rewives. I was like, do the investigation for me, please. And yeah. they were like, so much of it is her just re-explaining it to these A-listers who don't, like some of them are big fans and then it's just kind of weird because they're just rehashing something from so long ago or some of them like aren't that familiar with it. So if you're going to dip into the Bravo verse, like you need to know like who Kelly Benson, you can't be like, okay, well in this moment, this girl was on for a few. It just seems like it's not serving. I don't know what audience it's for besides the people that just like to hear Bethany. Yeah. Right. And also I think having big stars be your guest is really not that exciting either because every big star has their own podcast. Yeah. So it's like, oh, wow, you have to talk to this person. Like I'm oh, I'm wet while I'm driving to work. No one gives a <laughs> shit. Like just, just tell us what's interesting and juicy. And that's why podcasts work because it's like, look, I'm not listening to the ESPN podcast. I don't care about sports, you know? My dad used to say to my sister and I, he'd try to talk to us about sports and stuff and we'd be like all bored. And he'd be like, you know, one day some guy's gonna be really turned off that you don't wanna talk about this. And I'm like, do you imagine if I said to my sons, you know, who don't (laughs) care about housewives, you know, if you don't let me talk about Ramona Singer leaving housewives, some girl's gonna be really turned off one day. Like everyone could just listen to what they wanna listen to. (laughs) Right, and I think that's right. what's like great about today and like all of, all of what we do, you know, it's just find what like fits with you and stick with that. What are your thoughts about Bethany as like a housewife on the show, as someone who's watched the show for years, does, does she belong on the Mount Rushmore of housewives as she believes she does? I don't really think there is any Mount Rushmore. I mean, I think everybody's replaceable. I think everybody has their shelf life. I do thoroughly enjoy her. I love watching the older episodes of every franchise because there wasn't so much coming in from social media and there wasn't, you know, my business and, you know, like it's just so different now when you watch a show and it still can be super entertaining and all of that. But like when you, you're almost jealous, like when a, when somebody new comes into my group or whatever and they're like, all right, guys. I'm starting with Atlanta season one. Everyone's like, I'm so jealous because it's like, you don't know what's going to happen. And it's so fun and it's so authentic and it's so raw. And so, yeah, she's totally funny. She was, you know, she's great. She's, she's a really clever, she's a really clever person, but, and really funny, but I feel like I just can't, I just know what she's, I know her plan. And so to me, it's just very obvious to me. And it's kind of fun that the rest of the world is is tuning into it too. But I still think she's entertaining. And I still still think if she ever wanted to lower herself and go on a on a um a ultimate girls trip, I think it would be amazing. You know? So I like, agree. yeah, please go do it. I, yeah. I will, yeah. I it's definitely where we want to watch her. She's tried to do other things. Her talking with some other person on CNBC about business. I don't know what that was about people should work from home or not. Then she did oh, yeah. on HBO where she was trying to get an assistant. That was all fake and boring. We only really like to see her being really cruel to other women. That's what we like. That's what we like. She's very good at it. Yeah, she's really <laughs> she, good at it. She is. And also it's a thing you're basically, she does that on her TikTok. And I don't think she gets a check from that all the time. You could get it from Bravo or a reality yeah. show where you can, you, Megan, she can yell about Megan Markle all the time. Megan Markle doesn't really know who she is probably, but you can yell at Ultimate Girls Trip, Camille Grammer, and she'll yell back and it'll be a fun little back and forth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would love to see her get in and, and and somebody really dish out what she's been dishing out to them and call her out on her bullshit and stuff, you know? But um, who knows if she'll ever come back. I. You know, I, I kind of, I, I hope so. I love the ultimate girls trips. 
I think that is such the way to utilize these women. And I think it's great for the women because then they're not tied into these big contracts. They could go do other things. And we just, we just get it all. It's like, it's like going to tapas. It's like getting a little bite <laughs> of everything <laughs> and, totally. not be, and not feeling full and dirty. Like we're not going to mm. see somebody, you know, like some of these shows have gotten really dark, you know, with all the crimes and everything, but take these girls away for a week and you know, and it's it's great. Did you just see the supposedly the new list just came out? Are you excited yeah, yeah. about it? Because there's a lot of repeats from uh, the season two, which did so well. So I'm I'm curious, what are your thoughts on the Ultimate Girls Trip season forecast? I, I love. I mean, I have no complaints. Yeah. I I think it's all great. I I like Vicky. I like, you know, um, is Phaedra coming back? Phaedra yeah. was cute. Yeah. Um, I I love Camille. Camille is. I, a really cool person. I've known her for years and I've been wanting her to come back. And I think it's a good way to get your feet wet back in the franchise. But see, I understand why some of these people don't come back in the show completely because you really have to make sure is their life interesting and full enough to guarantee, to fill us with a whole, it's hard. And I feel like some of them do best on these trips. Like, uh, Ava uh, from Atlanta and uh, Brandy from Beverly Hills, put them somewhere for a week. They can have the time of their lives, but then they don't have to deal with all the other sh It seemed like that kind of works out best. I know Eva said that she liked that aspect of it last time. And Brandy, I mean, you could throw her anywhere and she's just having the time of her life. Yeah, what did you think about Brandy? Um, how over the holidays, I felt like there was a lot of like internet lies going on where i'm holding i almost did a thing where i'm like holding a diamond like i don't think i don't personally think brandy glanville i think this is what she was referring to i don't think brandy glanville will ever be asked back to be a regular beverly hills housewife unless she marries someone really rich it's interesting you say that heather because we interviewed her over the holidays and we asked her about potentially coming back to the real housewives of beverly hills and she she gave us a tease she was like i have andy cohen to thank for a lot of great things in my life and i think you're gonna see me soon and i was like oh okay like maybe it is beverly hills and then this announcement came out and so i'm like oh this this makes sense and her doing this show makes me feel like she's probably not doing she's the peacock queen now and it's also a thing too she doesn't have to deal with like i feel like kyle and all them if she's there she kind of gets rooted back to like everyone just tackling her versus she could just go on these shows, get her checks, have everybody love her, be a meme for a little bit, and then go back to her house. <laughs> and just be a professional reality competitive star. Like she's on the traders thing. Like yeah. go do, go do the European big bro. Like go do all that other stuff. And like, don't try to come back in this thing that can be so heavy. Like these shows to be a cast member on these shows, they can really like destroy your life. Like I always say like, Carol Radswell is the only one that kind of came out unscathed because she didn't have children whose lives could be destroyed. She didn't have a marriage whose husband, you know, all of a sudden this guy is confident or whatever. If someone has a husband that's had a great life for 50 years, he thinks he's cute and his wife gets on the show and he wakes up and everyone's like you and your double chin. Why didn't you make your wife coffee? You know what I mean? Like you've got it. That's true. Like, it's like, it's so much. And then, then he starts being mean to his wife. Like it is such a risk to go on these shows. I just like, I think that's why they have a hard time finding new people and why I, more and more we never see the husbands. And I mean, you're our uh, Los Angeles correspondent right now because you're, yes. you're, you're, you're friendly with the Beverly Hills ladies. You know, all that stuff yeah. going on with Rena gone, um, Diana gone, which should not shock me. Yeah. Do you, what do you feel that show needs right now? And do you think it needed a Rena pause? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I really, I really like Lisa Renna. I think she's gorgeous. I think she's so yeah. fun to watch. I love imp doing the impression. I mean, I wrote her and I was like, congrats for, congrats for moving on because what else can you say? I absolutely love her lip stuff. I have it on right now. It is uh, the best. Oh. Renna lip is the best liner lipstick. I swear. So I was like, girl, just work on that. Like just all the shit out of that and, then, and of course she could go do an ultimate girls trip and be like a blast oh yeah but i think the whole again it got dark with the internet stuff and i and i still don't know with the weird guy that you know 
I don't even want to say his name that was getting all involved with the Kathy Hilton and, and Lisa and then the bots and then the Garcelle's son. And I don't, I don't think that she had anything to do with it, but, but the, the ties of, I just, I don't know. It just got gross. And I also think her challenging, like Andy, like put me on pause and like, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. I think they want to put people in their place. Also someone like Dorinda and, and Lisa are extremely expensive Oh, so it's just like anybody that's like in a corporate America, the CEO is, is making five million dollars. Let's get rid of him and like have the people that are making, you know, 700 run the company. That's usually know. like you see on LinkedIn, yeah. you get fired Four new jobs come up all that do your work and they pay yes. them what is the price. <laughs> Heather, yeah, what are your I, thoughts yeah. about the way the fandom largely sided with Kathy over Rinna? I thought it was really interesting, but I think it was just a what was being accused of of Kathy. There was no audio proof of it. Mm -hmm. And I even think even though it was a derogatory, supposed derogatory homophobic slur that she said at one time, I think all the gay male fans don't give a they're all like mother I mean, yes queen i mean we, i was shouting they're kathy like, at bravo like, con hey, so yeah if, if they're like hey if you called that dj that didn't want to play michael jackson that song that word girl you're still 63 and fabulous and like i forgive you because you gave us paris hilton and i just don't think <laughs> i just don't like it was interesting because i'm like yeah there's levels of like we know that even if that did slip from her mouth she is not trying to take marital rights away from gay men and women so it's like and i think it know, didn't help her it didn't it didn't help this what helped her that yeah. rena was the one going after her because every year someone's like oh rena has a new person that's her punching bag and i feel people were at their boiling point with this one especially because kathy had the best situation because she's the friend of she just comes in is rich and like aloof and confusing and silly and doesn't have to show too much of her life so then everyone's just like, oh, Kathy's so funny. Because we see her for two minutes an episode. And then Rena's like, oh, but I don't like her. And everyone's like, no, we're done with you, Ren. I also think the really hard position for someone like Elisa Rena, who is smart, is a is a writer producer herself, really, and an actress. And she was the person that would be like Munchausen's. And she would give us entire seasons of stuff. And so I think the fact that she kept bringing it up because it was a juicy topic and it was something else to talk about. She, in her mind, probably thought, and even the producers at the time might've been like, good girl, you know, good girl. But then the people at home were like watching it as if you were just watching a group of women that might be your friends. And you're like, bitch, stop bringing it up. <laughs> so I just think it's like such a hard thing. And like, I, you know, I don't know. I think, um, you know, there's rumors that Paris Hilton will come on. I mean, oh. I, I don't know how authentic that would be. But, like, I think the more family ties, like, if we could just have just Kyle and the nieces and the sisters, if you just have all of them doing some stuff together. Like, it could kind of, like, turn into a Real Housewives of New Jersey where it's so, like, familial and it's all about the family. That would And, be like, amazing. the history and, like, yeah. sisterhood. Like, that's what I think that sister thing that you love, but then you're like, oh my God, you know, I, I don't know. So they'll probably find some other people that are, um, do you think anyone else is going to get the boot? Well, everyone right now is really between Dorit or Crystal getting the sayonara. I hope what I'm assuming also is what's going to happen is they kind of do it like Jersey where they were like, okay, Jackie, you're on a little thing. We're adding in some new people. Let's see who brings it. And then maybe they'll see. I think I don't think they're gonna get rid of Dorit because I feel like Rena was their um, cost cutting <laughs> um, necessity. So I think Dorit could stay maybe as a friend of. And I feel Crystal also is cheap enough to maybe stay on. And I hope she gets a few under her fire because I really liked how she was at the reunion where I was like, "But Crystal, do this every episode, and then you'll get some more stuff going on." Yeah, I agree. Crystal, the thing is, Crystal is like I've you know I've interviewed her and met her a few times. She really is extremely genuine and down to earth yeah. even though she marries married someone who's wealthy and they are wealthy together and she has created her own business that they never let her feature um, yeah. she 
is just like a really nice woman who's like in love with her husband and like a good mom and like and so I don't know I mean she's gorgeous to look at and everything and she's certainly wealthy enough and I mean I want to see her come on but like if their complaint is that she's like not a horrible cruel bitch I don't know what to, you know like well I would almost I like she's use, gonna... use yeah. her as the big like Hollywood and because I feel out of all of them she has low-key the biggest Hollywood connections too where I mean even yeah. like She's always like besties with, with like Sarah Michelle, Sarah Michelle Geller. Geller and all that yeah. stuff. Like that's the kind yeah. of stuff, especially like, I mean, living in Jersey, I'm like, oh, that's fun. That's what I want to watch someone who's filming a show in Beverly Hills, Hollywood area doing. So like, kind of like, I hope they at least let her highlight some more of that versus having to like pick a feud with Kyle. Cause I'm like, I well, just don't think they care about each other. <laughs> I definitely ha don't need to see any more guest appearances by Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> you, no, you, you're over that. I mean, <sighs> Did you like, did you at least appreciate the wind chime of it all and the Dorit freaking out over I, it? I, you like I mean, I thought that was cute and sweet. It was just a lot. And then to come out at the reunion and I'm like, enough. Like, I, I don't know if it was like a network combination and they are also the producers of the Halloween movie. It felt like a lot. And I'm like, I really don't think all, all the women at home that are my age are like that horny. <laughs> For a Jamie Lee Curtis guest spot, like <laughs> it did feel like me, corporate that's synergy. Like, yeah, like invite Madonna over. Or let's hear that freak talk. Like, like let's have like I'd be a little more intrigued. Like she's a good person. She's a nice person. No one's ever thought she wasn't. So I didn't think like her appearance was like that juicy. Well, that's also like there was no unpredictability with it either. Because like when Nicki Minaj took over for an hour of the Potomac, yeah. You're like, okay, Nikki, uh, what is going to happen next? And it's like very fun. And like, she's a fan of the show actually versus right. Jamie Lee was kind of like, no, I watched uh, what's happened. Like, didn't really, care. like, I don't think she, I don't think she could pick Dorit out of a lineup. Well, now she can with the wind chimes, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, I the Dorit stuff is fun, but she's also like, yeah. And I hope that we see Erica actually like, date or something because i really don't feel like we see any of her life we don't see her son the husband's gone um it's almost i'm I, like is it the girl who cried tinder day too because i'm like she's always like yes. i'm having the best sex of my life but where is the <laughs> sex? yeah where is he where and then there's also those weird internet rumors like on reddit and stuff about her yeah remember the thing with fred durst do you remember that she was like people like were speculating that oh and yeah. that too yeah army hammer and fred durst like she's getting it in with <laughs> These people, I want to know more. Listen, honey, I get I get big I get all different <laughs> shades of dick. I definitely think she like does. And I think she always did. I think they had an oh. arrangement. I think she always did. And I think she's, you know, but, and I think she can be really like pretty cool and interesting. Mm -hmm. And who knows what will happen with this case, but it's not like she's on trial. She's not going to go to prison for anything. Um, and this could go on for a long time. And I guess they feel like, well, how are we going to be friends with her if we keep, you know, reading LA Times articles? So it's like, I better cancel my subscription if I want to see <laughs> on the show. And like, so I, I, it'll be interesting. But obviously, hopefully she stay. I, I want everybody to stay. I don't, I do I don't care about Diana. I'm, I'm sad about Lisa Renna. So I hope everybody else stays. And then we get like one or two interesting people that actually have some history with some of the girls what are your thoughts about jen going to prison and then like the the inevitable shakeup that the salt lake city cast is going to get do you think that it can survive without jen i don't know i mean i i like the girls and i find them like interesting i mean i don't find salt lake city like kind of the way i did about dallas just aesthetically as a city it's just like when you compare it to like the landscape of new york and miami and la uh, you know it, it's just like well, we've seen the mormon temple we've seen the snow-capped mountains like i don't know there's just like and it was just it was a weird cast to begin with like it's just like from from the cult leader to jen shaw so it's a cursed would, cast almost yeah i would think if they do it if they keep it up they've got to bring in like some actually like it really great people and i just think they're i think it's really hard to cast someone that's willing to put their life out there that has real money and you know especially when you see that people go to prison you know like right. i mean andy did, did say 
on his radio show that they they have some great casting uh, potential for the next season that they're already looking at some new girls. So my fingers are crossed that they can round out this cast and revive the show because I would, you know, I, I love Meredith and Lisa and like Heather and Whitney are so great. I just, you know, the four of them does not make a show. And I, I don't know how much I love the Angies and Dana, you know, like, I don't know yeah, if they're that- like, I, they, they, I mean, they they try. I mean, they tried. Like they do. They, tr- they try. Do? I just don't know but, which Angie's which Angie too either. Like that's how little I'm. Like I don't. What's going on now? Like yeah. And the black guy really pissed off the fans. What is your theory? I think she got drunk and hit it on something, and I think production is is she's a little in on it with production in that they were at risk because she got so drunk and hurt herself. Mm -hmm. So I think they were like, be a good little Mormon girl and keep the story going so that we have something else to talk about in this show. That's a kind of boring, you know, besides Jen. And and it's really boring to watch it now because you're like, well, we know the end result. So we're watching it where she hasn't gone to trial yet and she hasn't admitted to it yet. You know, so it's like we're in San Diego, like, you know, go-karting and we just, oh, what happened? Jen hit her and we, we know Jen didn't hit her, you know, like what do we think Jen's big, hard, you know, titted implant knocked her in the eye when they were like <laughs> smashing boobs. Do we think that the gay guy from the choir came back and, you know, the bear swung his dick around and hit her in the eye? no, nothing juicy happened. She got oh drunk and she hit it. Well, do you know what's really yeah. interesting is Danny and I just interviewed Giselle from Potomac, who was yeah. on Girls Trip season three with Heather and Whitney. And she said that they the black eye was like still a topic of conversation in Thailand and that they didn't really get any closure, like figure it out even in Thailand. Like because Whitney was like, I don't know what happened and I just want to know Heather tell us. And Heather still is her lips are sealed. I don't know why. I think that uh, supposedly it's in her book. <laughs> we'll so- see. So we'll I'm sure I'm sure you guys will get the leaked copy and then you'll do just the explosive, just like you did for Harry, the explosive <laughs> right. about the eye. She was washing her face. She was drunk. She slipped. She hit it on the shelf or whatever. Wait, yeah. speaking of Harry, I want to get your um, thoughts on all the headlines. Like, do you have a favorite headline, whether it was the losing the virginity behind a pub? The uncircumcised. Um, circumcision. Cold- Oh, Cocaine. there's been so many Fro- frozen <laughs> at, at the wedding. Frostbit <laughs> at the wedding is one of my favorite. Definitely the, you know, the balding comments. His balding head is more alarming than mine. Um, all of it is just like, it's amazing. And, um, you know, I've gone with my, my relationship with Harry and Megan really has been all over the place because when she first came onto the scene, I absolutely loved her. I related to her. I was like, she's a Catholic girl who came from LA and she went to an all girl Catholic high school and she's an actress and like, and he's hot. And I, this is all great. And you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't know anyone doesn't like her in the very beginning. I was like, who doesn't like Megan? Then when all this happened and then crying about having to couch surf onto Tyler Perry's mansion and boohoo to us. I was like a little, and then there was a part of me that just got a little jealous that people that have never been producers or writers are getting a hundred million Netflix deals and never done a podcast or getting a hundred million Spotify deal. Mm -hmm. So then I became a little like, all right, whatever. Now with this book, now I'm taking it from a perspective of a mother of two sons that are three years apart. And I do refer to my second son as the spare. And I, um, you know, and I, so now I'm like, now I want these boys just to get along, Aww. you know, cause I'm like, I, and I don't know that they will. After I this. was going to say, I cannot imagine a world where they come back from this. It's really bad. And I also feel like, what do you do once you spilled all the juice and it's all in the book, you know, we know everything, you know, and you've contradicted yourself between the book and the Netflix and the Oprah interview. There's many yeah. contradictions. Okay, so I always say, so now what? Now are you just feeding chickens and you're going to have your own like TI and tiny, but it's called H&M? Like, <laughs> what, do, what do we do now? Like, well, I was going to not- ask you, what do you think their next move could be? Like, what other like trick do they have up their sleeve? 
I don't know because it's yeah. like, are they going to be Joanna and Ship Gaines? <laughs> are they? Is she going to do her line of Skims? Do we think of her a fashionista? Is she going to do something with children's stuff? Yeah. I mean, I she just gonna? Are we going to see her selling flat tummy tea in about two years? <laughs> I don't know. Huh, who knows? <laughs> I mean, I, the... I mean, I really, I don't really know because I mean. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're good looking. She's very, she's absolutely stunning. Like she's gorgeous. Beautiful. So I don't know if she'll ever go back to like, I don't know that she could really act and someone would really want her in anything. But I mean, I know that the show did great for Netflix, but I just don't know where you go from here, you know? Cause, yeah, because that's the thing. People like them talking about that, but I don't think I want to watch them having like their morning routine. I'm, I'd be care, like I'd read about that maybe, but I wouldn't like yeah. watch a Netflix documentary about it. <laughs> In my dream world, she yeah. moves down to LA and gets on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Can you imagine her and Dorit together talking in their kind of accents? You know, I can't believe that I've never even thought of that. And I am going to start to manifest it. Let's do it. That is the thing to save the show. When we, inf oh. we need to start infiltrating women, <laughs> just like when the show first started in New York and all that, the women were early 40s. Mm -hmm. Early 40s is the prime age for a for a 10 year run. That's mm. true. Like your kids aren't babies because no one wants to see you potty train, really, honestly. But you have a you're, you're that mom we see a little bit of like you being the the mom with the kids the husband but you're also at that place where are you a solid marriage or could you get divorced like it's that hump like or is this the end all be all or could i do better so okay i have it i have what's gonna happen with megan Tell okay us. okay so in about this is sad but in about i've already predicted this in about like four years or something she they break up Okay. I don't want this. I'm not wishing it. It's a you just you're seeing. I'm it's your seeing. intuition. Miss Cleo is here. <laughs> yes, and she marries even better. I mean, like a Jeff Bezos situation. From and, your lips yeah. to God's ears. I <laughs> and so at that point, I don't know that she'll be on a housewife things, or there'll be some new thing that's going on in the media that's even like hotter and cooler to be a part of and she, you know whatever that is and she'll uh, jump no on she's it. not going ever out of the limelight no. never no she worked too hard to get here yeah yeah she, she was she was on suits for seven years she's gonna own she wants some accolades now yeah, <laughs> yeah. now heather uh we have to wrap up but before we go Danny and I want to play a fun little game where yes. we're going to interview Jen Shaw and you're going to play the role of Jen Shaw. We're just going to get Jen's thoughts on what's okay, next. I don't really do life. a great. Or would you rather I... do Lisa Rinna? We could we, do Rinna too. Lisa do you want to do Rinna? Um, yeah. In my best is Ramona. Oh. Oh, we can so, do Ramona. Think, okay. If you want, let's do Ramona. Okay, so, you can okay. ask me anything. Ramona. Okay. Yeah. How, um, so you really are not going to do Roni Legacy? Why, Ramona? You know what, guys? I'm really glad you asked me that, okay? Because, you know, when we did it, we were on the cover of every magazine. We were, like, bigger than all the other franchises. Like, nobody had even heard of Real Housewives of OC, and, you know, until you heard of New York. And I really feel like we did it. I really feel like we showed how strong women could be great friends. And you know what? I'm ready to do a new chapter and give young girls really great advice about wonderful skincare and business. What Was it really your choice, Ramona, to leave the show, or were you fired? You know what? It was one of those things, you know, I'll be really honest with you because you know what? I don't lie. Everyone knows I have the biggest heart of anybody and I have the most honest vein in my body. I kind of just was like, you know what? I don't really know if I want to do it. I kind of put it out there in interviews and I was like, you know what? I think legacy is kind of a loser show. I think everything, I think the old people are losers. And, you know, I kind of put it out there kind of knowing that like, you know, that might get me cut or whatever. And you know what happened? And I'm like, thank you. Thank you, God. My parents are watching me. They know what's best for me, and I'm ready to move on. Okay, well, Wait. lastly, Ramona, who is the biggest loser among the legacy girls, would you say? I mean, honestly, you know, I hate to say it because we've had our ups and downs, but I think it's Bethany because I really don't think that she supports women. And, you know, it's really kind of satisfying when a lot of people are showing that video of when I was, like, so upset with her because she wasn't supporting me and she wasn't going to my anti-skincare line. And I was sitting there and I was on the phone and I was like, you know what, Bethany, you don't support women. Because if you really think about it, I mean, besides her daughter, she doesn't really support anybody. 
Yeah, other than Bryn. No one other else. <laughs> Damn, bravo. That was great, Heather. That thank was amazing, so Heather. Much. Oh, my God. And thank thanks for hanging so out with us. This was on. such a joy. Yes, so great talking to you guys. Love your show and love following everything Page Six. Thank so you. thank you so much. Oh, and and tell our viewers back. where they can catch a Juicy Scoop. Uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, Instagram and TikTok is at Heather McDonald as well as Twitter. So follow me. I, you know, I put up lots of funny clips and stuff. And of course, watch and you can watch it on YouTube, too, on my YouTube channel. Perfect. All right, Heather. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon.